Now, children of Ibrahim Mohammed, an Ejra-based social media activist whose murder sparked mass riot in the town, say they are still battling traumatic scenes of his death one year after he was killed by unknown assailant. Two of the five girls he left behind are unable to use the main entrance to their house to avoid coming into contact with the bloody spot where their father was found unconscious in a pool of blood. Police say Ibrahim Mohammed, also known as Kaka, uh, Kaka Macho, was attacked in the head, possibly with a club by his assailant, as he entered his family house on his motorbike. My colleague on him, on him interior visited the Dagomba Line family house of the late activist Atejra one year after his passing and has come through with his report. Ibrahim Mohammed, a faction designer noted for using social media platforms to address the ills in the Jra, died at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital three days after he was attacked on June 26, 2021. Police say the late activist was attacked whilst entering the family house here at Dagombalai in the Jra through this entrance, which then used to be a wooden gate. Any day I entered the house, I remember the scene I saw that day. He was pulling his motorbike in. Then he was hit by the sticks. Caralyze maybe one is hiding here, one is hiding here. So they attacked him here. So he was lying in a pool of blood. And that fateful dawn when you come, this spot portals is filled with blood. The sticks were lying here, one here, one day. And the people have fled away. Angered by the failure of police to arrest his suspected killers, the youth went on rampage, attacked the Ejra police station and vandalized property. I called Lieutenant Colonel Kipra, commanding officer for battalion, to dispatch some of the team of Operation Calm Life to provide protection. A military reinforcement deployed on the orders of the Ashanti Regional Minister, Simon Osei Mensa, to maintain law and order, ended up gunning down two more people. Somebody in the military uniform kneeled down, aimed at somebody, shooting him down. Those memories are still fresh on the minds of residents. What happened was not something that um, the citizenry, for that matter, the opinion leaders, the chieftain's institution, the assembly wanted particularly the shedding of blood. It is an incident we do not want to remember. Abulai Abubakar's younger brother, 25-year-old Abdul Nazil, a father of one, was among the protesters who were killed. He died protecting the multimedia team who covered the protest. That day I was together with him. After the cemetery, I came before him. On his way going, he met some, some of the youth he made a ring with one of our junior brother, uh, defending the media people to cover the, the demonstration. Some minutes we were here, uh, they called and said uh, they have uh, shot him. I went to the hospital, I met him on the hospital bed, already dead. Just like that. But despite receiving compensation from government on the recommendations of a committee of inquiry, his family wants to see the military officers who took part in the shooting punished. We were not demanding for compensation. The government compensated it on his own wisdom and the law for the family. He did that. But we did not request for compensation. What we want is justice. Nothing but justice. Nobody is supposed to be above the law of this country. So what we are calling for is he should come out and explain to Ghanaians why there are so many options of uh, defending or controlling crowd. Then they decided to use life bullets. So we wanted a stop 
for this type of killing. The family of Kaka Mechu, the man whose death sparked the protest, still bear the scars of the incident. A brother of the late activist shares the family's dilemma. He has four, five daughters. Two of them don't pass to their side. They feel that any time they are passing, they see their father lying in the pool of blood. So there is another outlet at the other end through the mother's door. So they pass that end. Mistakenly, if the person gets here, you see him crying. So psychologically, the children have a lot. These are children, but as I'm telling you, it is a trauma to these children. The family says they have been denied the opportunity to mourn and pray for their departed relatives as authorities of the Jasej Dumasi Municipal Assembly moved to injunct activities and marked to commemorate the one-year anniversary of their death. Nafiu Mohammed and Abulai Abubakar are brothers of the late Kaka Mechu and Abdunazil. We have been denied of our religious rights. What disgusted me was now the court that has been used as, as an obstacle to prevent the family from mourning their individuals. It's just, as it's when I call it as a quack system. This thing will not happen in any, in, in, in any proper country where democracy and rule of law is happening. It is a very sad issue for the democracy of our country. We as a family lost our loved one one year now, and we decided to uh, do some prayers for them as a Muslims. Uh, and we were denied to do that. So why would the local assembly prevent the anniversary celebrations of the late activists and others who died whilst seeking justice for him? I caught up with the chief executive of the Ejudia Municipal Assembly, Dr. Kingsley Osei. The traditional council, the assembly, and the Muslim community came together and organized one year anniversary in a form of prayer session for the departed souls, the three of them. In fact, the chief imam, or for that matter, the Muslim community, demanded um, a bull as part of a sacrifice to aid the one-year prayer session for the departed, and it was provided. So we felt that thing had been done. We are the music who are in charge of security feel and think that allowing them to go ahead with that um, celebration or the observation could, in parenthesis, bring about another uprising. And we wouldn't want that to happen. From Ejura in the Ashanti region for Joy News, I'm interior reporting.